exciting division to watch this year because not necessarily because of the skill, but just they're all going to be everybody a, is trash. <laughs> well, outside of like the outside of like the Redskins, right? Well, hey, that's racist, bro. We don't say that anymore. That's, oh, sorry. That's... I'm sorry. The Washington football team. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm about to get trolled so bad. Catch I just said dancing. all that shit about Rachel Nichols, <laughs> yeah. and all of a sudden, I just said the Redskins. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're yeah, canceled. Man. Yeah. He already has an offer from Kentucky, though, so. We'll see. It'll get there. I mean, we got to also realize what he is. Only a sophomore. Yeah, for sure. It'll just, you know, he's got time to develop. And he might get bigger, too. So, that'd be, yeah, he, you know. I mean, we'll just see. Already, like, 6'4". Yeah, something like that. And I remember LaMelo was, like, a little dude in high school. And then, like, out of nowhere, just, like, shot up to. Shot up. Yeah. Whatever so he was. Just... Yeah. I think LaMelo just won, like, breakout athlete of the year. Mm-hmm. He did. Good for him. Baller, he definitely he did. Bro. Man, did you see that uh that fight last night? Man. Oh wow, bro. Just Ooh, I of, feel bad. Me too. I feel bad. Uh, like, because like, tell me you didn't get a sense of like it's over. Like his career is over. Like you didn't. Did you get that feeling? Because I did. Well, see, yeah, and I mean, you've talked about it before. Like, I feel like his best days are behind him already, you know, and a lot of that, I don't even know how much of that is his uh, physical attributes not being there. It's just like the mindset of being a, you know, hundred millionaire, you know, many times over. And it's like, where's your mindset at? But uh, it was unfortunate because something like that is like, there's no closure in that, right? Like, yeah, the fight ended. And in my opinion, he was getting his ass beat. Like if that round went 10 more seconds, he, he was, you know. Yeah, yeah. What's the name was giving them some work. Yeah, but uh, that's still just like, that's there's no closure in that. Like he broke his leg, that's, or, you know, his ankle or whatever. And that's why the fight ended. And I feel bad for Poirier. Like that sucks. Like you were whooping that ass and like, you don't get the, you know, validation of like a stoppage. Like that sucks. Yeah, because he was, I mean, he was giving Connor everything he could take. Like his he well, he was quicker. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was he was checking everything. Like he he just looked he looked sharper. He did, man. It was a good first round. Like the first minute or two, it looked like Connor was winning the round. You know, he was like throwing leg kicks and stuff, and kind of like mm-hmm. I was surprised. I was like, whoa, he's kind of giving Dustin the treatment he gave Connor the first round of the last fight. You know, he just kept checking the leg. And yeah. then uh, once the thing that was surprising is he went for that guillotine choke and tried to like bring Poirier to the ground. And the mm-hmm. commentator was like, what are you doing, man? Like that is not, like, that's your- not, that's not your game. Stop yeah. it. Yeah. Which is hilarious because literally like a week ago, he was talking all that shit about how like a submission doesn't count like to him or something. Bro, like, like okay. Like what are you talking like? I only count them knockouts. Like, bro, you lost. I, that's the thing, bro. And got handed by Khabib. Like, let's let's just talk about it. like he over here. He tries so much to try to talk about Khabib and shit like that. Like he handed you, bro. <laughs> yeah, like bro. he dealt with you like it was light work. Mm-hmm. I'm completely on the same page as you, bro. And that's the thing. It's like, and then he got desperate. I guess you'd say. And then he went for two submissions in the first round of last night's fight. It's like, bro, you just talked all this shit about going for submissions. Like, what do you? What the hell, and man? And then all of a sudden, are you going with this shit? Like, if, come on, bro. I know, man. And that's the thing. It's like, it, I break it down like this every time when I talk about him. It's like, he's a great fighter. But, like, when you talk that much shit, bro, you better be, like, undefeated and just be, like, mowing through people. You got to like, back it up, bro. Yeah. Like, he just ain't, he's not able to do that, all right? Like, yeah. Like, you just don't look as good as you used to look, man. No. And it's, uh, but I, I'm with you there. I don't, I don't know what his future holds now, like, or... If he'd even want to, if I'm in that position, why the fuck would I want to recover from that injury, go through physical therapy, and then get right back into that, man? Like, that's just, he got, I mean, he just, he's got that, he has that type of like mentality where like he's not going to count this fight, right? Because it was because of the breakage or whatever, which I don't think anybody would blame him. So, but he wants to get that revenge. Mm -hmm. I get that, man. But that's what, again, that's why I get so frustrated for Dustin because it's like that was like, heading towards a stoppage for him which is so frustrating because it's like like you just said connor and definitely connor fans now are going to be like well that doesn't count like they're still one one like whatever and it's like damn man like you're fuck you you're kind of right but like you know it's like 
that was completely turning one side. It was a good first round, but the momentum was completely swung to oh, Poirier yeah. towards that last minute. He was just pounding on him. So yeah, it was it was a lot. and then uh, um, O'Malley. Oh man, he's got like hands, I don't know bro. if I would have agreed. I don't know if I would have agreed with them. St- it was thirty seconds left, bro. Mm-hmm. Like just let that shit ride at that yeah. point. I mean, granted, he was clocking all dude but you at that like it's 30 seconds left in the fucking fight just yeah i see it both ways man i get what you're saying because dana was saying like he didn't have a problem with it because like it could have been stopped like a round and a half before that like he was just getting teed off on so it's just like you know i see it both ways and then from a fighter's perspective obviously you never want to see it get stopped you kind of want to go out on your shield but uh yeah man that dude's got hands bro it's gonna be interesting to see he does keeps developing and hopefully he you know Starts getting in some big money fights because that dude's a beast. So he is, he is. And then what is it? Me, uh, Michelle. Oh uh, yeah, she I got his cut last pretty, name. Yeah. Wait, but like he, about, he's a dude one? from Brazil that uh, does that um, Brazilian dance fighting. Oh yeah, like, yeah. dude is insane, bro. Yeah. Over here, fucking backflipping on people and shit. Like right. That was wild. I've never seen anything like that. Bro. He, I, one thing I love about his fight is it, it's not. It's just action, bro. Like mm-hmm. you don't know what the heel just randomly just jump, hop off the fence and got hit somebody with a Superman punch, bro. Like, yeah, it, right. He is insane, but it's just it's just action, bro. Mm-hmm. Like as as you know, as a fan that just likes to you know likes to watch the sport, it, you you're going to be entertained by him no matter what. No, exactly. He's just an entertaining fighter. You're right. And those are the dudes you want to see. You want to see guys like that up in, like, you know, the big fights. They're going to put on a show, you know? Yeah. Something to be said for that. I appreciate, like, great fighters like Khabib and Mayweather. But I was even just talking to some dude at the dog park today, and, like, he was saying, like, he hates watching Khabib. Like, he respects the shit out of him. But, like, just, you know, he's just a boring fighter to watch. So, it's like, I do understand there's people, like, who were just talking about who, you know, you're doing backflip kicks onto people on the ground and stuff like that. And it's like, that's, (laughs) you know, everyone's going to tune in to see that. Like, that's crazy. So yeah, and then oh dude, what was it? Uh, uh, Ty. Uh, got the guy that TKO the other dude. Yeah, Greg. Well, you remember Greg Hardy used to play for the uh for the Cowboys. He was like mm-hmm. a, a DN or whatever, but he clapped mm-hmm. him. Yeah, he did, man. He clapped and did do and did the shoey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, would you ever? Would you ever do a shoey? No, man. They were asking him to, or Dana after the press conference, is that going to be like a tradition? He's going to do that after every fight now or something like that. He was like, he's been doing it. So <laughs> I don't That's know. That's insane. I can't do it, dog. I, don't, <laughs> I ain't got it in me. I ain't about to drink nothing out my shoe, bro. bro. <laughs> oh, First of all, so... I ain't about to fuck up my shoes and I, I ain't about to drink nothing out of it. I'm good. Nah, that's disgusting, bro. It is. Yeah. It, is. it was it a is. action packed night, though. It was a. It was. Some really good fights. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, so we're two games into the finals now. Yeah. It's looking like, you know, Suns right now have all the momentum, but they were obviously playing their two home games, and then we got a game today in a couple hours, right? So Yeah, well, it comes on at 9, I believe. Okay. Cool, cool. So that'll be a good one to watch. It's uh, I mean, this, right. right now it looks like Milwaukee just cannot handle, like, Phoenix's ball movement and the way they run their offense. Well, I don't. So it, I don't think it's anything defensively that's wrong. I think I just think that it's Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton haven't showed up. Definitely, right? I'm with you there. Like Drew Holiday, I think the first game, what he shoot like four for like twenty something, and Chris Middleton was like really, you know, both they were bad. Like so, it just wasn't. They just didn't have good games, and they. they they need those guys to step up. Like, yeah, so Chris Middleton last game was 5 for 16. Drew Holiday was 7 for 21. Yeah, that's that, garbage. It's not enough. They it's tend to enough. play better at home, though, so it'll be interesting. Right, to see exactly. Yeah, so these two so games they, will. It's going to make a huge, huge difference in how things uh, kind of play out, but um, it, I think those are going to be like the difference makers is that they they have to play like they have to find a way to kind of bring that best effort like you said they play a lot better when they're at home Mm -hmm. so we'll see yeah they definitely need to bring that but what do you think about on the other side it's just crazy to me like the flip side of it when they're on defense like 
they have no answer for that high pick and roll. And then like Chris, I've never noticed it until now, but like Chris Paul and Devin Booker do something that I love so much. That's kind of lost in today's game. When you come off the high pick and you like don't settle for the three or get into the bed, just shoot the mid range. You have these open elbow jumpers and they thrive in it. Both of them. They love it. You know, you'll see book like kind of go just back and forth between the elbows and kind of just shoot like faders. And I, I love it. Like, it seems like no one has an answer for that. Like, you know, mid range game off the pick. Well, the thing is, is because it 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 puts the defense in a no man's land, right? Because mm-hmm. coming off that coming off that pick and roll, especially with Chris Paul, what he's great at doing is he comes so tight off that pick and roll. Now all of a sudden you got you got a guy on your back, right? So he's pretty much out the picture, and now you're putting the guy. Like it's pretty much like a big guy, or whatever. You're putting them in a in a decision of they have to figure it out whether they're gonna take the rolling man because Aiton's rolling. He's going to the basket, mm-hmm. right? So either Aiton's rolling or they're gonna play up on you for that mid range, mm-hmm. and they got to pick their poison. Yep. And exactly. it's so tough to kind of guard that because that rolling man, especially with Aiton, it's a live threat almost every single time. That's and what I was about to got, say. Right, and yeah. then you got Chris Paul in the mid range who's deadly, right? So it's, exactly. It's, is you're literally playing two on one at that point, right? And you have to commit because it's a game of inches, right? Like if you even yeah. like aren't like a hundred percent committed to following Aiden, like you just said, it's just a lob, like and it's a it's That's a dunk, it. you know what I mean? That's so it's it. like if you're not a hundred percent sticking to him, if you're kind of like leaning off, like I'm gonna kind of you know put a hand right. up in Chris Paul's face, like it's just I'll you like it's right. So then your other choice is like okay, now you got to have somebody off the weak side kind of dig in and maybe help out on Chris Paul, but the moment you do that. You Shooter. got Bridges over in a corner or Cam Johnson or Jay Crowder over there in one of these corners, and they've been fucking deadly. What are they? Yeah, man. Like they such a good collection of game. very, like, decent players, I guess is, like, what you'd say. Like, you know, obviously Chris Paul, Book, and Aiden, but, like, the rest of them, like, usually you look at players on a team and you're, like, they're kind of a weak suit. Like, you know, like, they, they, they have to come in for the minutes, but, like, they're not – they don't do a lot of – it seems like everyone in the Suns rotation, like, has a service. They have a role and they, like, yeah, thrive they're solid. In it, you know? They're just – the thing is is that they're starting to lose that depth. Like, you lost Sarge game one. I mm-hmm. think they lost Tory Craig game two. So, like, that bench is starting to get, you know, smaller and smaller, especially, like, they're becoming thinner um, in the uh, in the front court, right? Because, mm-hmm. like, Sarge was your backup center. Is so, he out for the series? Yeah, he's done. He has he tore his ACL. Oh, shit, man. Yeah. Yeah, and so I don't I didn't know if they gave any reports about Tory Craig, what happened with him. But, like, that's just, it's, you know, that's, those things are tough. Yeah, like oh, who they're probably like, yeah they're probably going to run like a seven eight man rotation now. Then, wouldn't you think? Like, I don't. Yeah, I mean, they've been running eight, so now you have to probably cut it down to like seven. You know yeah. what I mean? And maybe you can get some spot minutes with like Kaminsky, mm-hmm. um, maybe helping out or uh, Nader or whatever. But it's 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 going to be tough for them. But I will say this: Giannis looks really really good coming off that injury. I didn't even think he's going to play game one, and he still looks like he wasn't. I think with game one, he just wasn't completely confident in his leg. and He just wasn't sure. But I think game two, he was in attack mode. He was going at it. So um, it's going to be – I think this game is going to be very pivotal for the whole entire se- – what happens the rest of the series. Oh, yeah. They can't go down 3-0. Like, I mean, that's just no. – You know, just historically, that's never, you know, worked out. So it's like that. this is a must win for sure today. So – It'll yeah. be interesting. Game two was different in the sense, like you just said, Giannis looked like Giannis, like MVP Giannis. He was just kind of getting to the rim at will, and it just kind of came down to what help. you, yep, what you initially alluded to, bro. It's just like those other X factors aren't knocking down shots. So it's like that that kind of – it was like they let Giannis get his, and they were like, you know, but the rest of them are not going to – you know, but they were getting open shots. They are just missing they're getting, yeah, They just didn't make anything. Yeah. Like, it wasn't like they were getting bad shots. They just didn't – like, Drew Holiday was missing layups, right? Like, yeah, Chris man. Middleton was missing wide open shots. They just weren't hitting shots, and it's just – that's that inconsistency that you kind of get with those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know, um, you know, there was conversations around, like, well – because, like, when Giannis went out in that game against the Hawks – Middleton and Drew Holiday and like even their offense they played at a little bit of a faster pace and they played a lot they played much more efficiently yeah that's the argument right, when right? Giannis was out right compared to Giannis is in so um because it, you just get a little bit more ball movement because you know Giannis is Giannis getting the ball he's doing one or two things he's driving it um or you know he's getting fouled so it's it's going to be 
I'll be really interested. I think the Bucks will uh, win this game, um, but I'm not sure if they'll win game four. Yeah, that's where it'll be cool because it's like if Suns can just take one, then they get to close it out in Phoenix on in Game Five, right. if, you know. So that's uh, yeah, that'll be that's gonna be hype over here, man. It's gonna be fucking crazy to see. It's gonna be mm-hmm. insane. It's looking at tickets, bro. Like nosebleeds are like nine hundred right now. I'm like, are God you damn, serious? Bro. Yeah, bro. I was like, fuck, because I was look. I was like, this would be awesome. This is the time. Do they have do. like a standing room only type of option or no? I don't know. I don't know. I was just I was thinking of just driving down there, you know, and going to the actual ticket office and seeing if I could get something at like face value because obviously everything you see online is just you know right. resale. Yeah. So. I, I was thinking about doing that. Maybe I'll do that this week because I don't think they'd come back until like next weekend. So we'll see. But man, yeah, that the tickets are crazy. So God, I don't know, bro. Insane. I don't have nine hundred dollars to spend on a, a basketball game. <laughs> <laughs> it would be cool though, bro. I think they're gonna do it. It would be a memory. Yeah. What do you think? You think they're gonna close it out in like five or six, or you think it'll be more of a series? I, I I'm hoping for more of a series. Um, but I, I think it'll probably uh, go six with Phoenix okay. winning because um, I just I just have a hard time, you know, trusting that both Middleton and Drew Holiday are going to get it going at the same time while Giannis is getting it going. And one, it's going to be a situation where somebody's going to struggle. Uh, and I just think with Phoenix being a little bit more well balanced. What is uh what does it do for Chris Paul's legacy if they win? I mean, I think. It, I don't know if it does much more to his legacy, to be honest. Um, it wasn't like he wasn't going to be like a first ballot Hall of Famer, right? Like that was already solidified. Does it move him more up the ranks with him having a championship? Yeah, like all time point cards, I guess. Like, would that move? Like, I don't that like, like, does that move him? Because you, you think that there's the people that are above him, who would you put? You probably put Magic, Zeke, and probably what, maybe Steph? Yeah, Our well, that's like what's interesting. For- I was about to say, so what is that, like, Gary Payton, John Stockton, Chris Paul right there, you know, does that push right. him over? I think if he gets a championship, and let's say he is looking like he may get finals MVP, I would think that that would push him over mm-hmm. over uh, both Gary Payton and John Stockton. Yeah, I would think so, too. And it's like he's just paid his dues. And, like, I was talking to someone else about this. Like, let's be honest, like, He's done this in every culture he's went to. Granted, he hasn't taken him to the you know peak every time, but it's like every single system he goes into, they just get better. They become a better team, man. Like, look at him last year. That was a bunch of, like, young kids. The people he's playing with now are a bunch of young kids, but in Oklahoma City, people were kind of like, this is where CP3 is going to die. And, like, he just – Lit it up, man. They kind of went one of four. Had was it the fourth or fifth best record in the West last year? Yeah, went to Game Seven against the uh, Rockets, I think. Actually. Yeah, yeah. So, it's insane. So he's just a team yeah. lifter, you know. So definitely but someone I'd want. We gotta talk about what happened yesterday with USA basketball. Okay, get into. Didn't it. I tell you? What did I tell you when we were talking about US? When we were talking about the Olympics and basketball, I just said too be small. careful. With that African team, you did, bro. I they lost. I told you man. this, and they lost to Nigeria. That's I crazy. You. How is that I possible, man? Like I just, I don't. Well, they got. It's not like Nigeria doesn't have. They got pros. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They got. They got Precious o- Ochunwa. They got um, Josh Okogi. Like they got pros on it. They got NBA players on that team, and yeah. then uh, Mike Brown from the Golden State Warriors is coaching them. Like they got guys that can. That can play or whatever, but also not to mention, like it was some of these select guys that were also playing too, right? Like not like the full roster that was mm-hmm. still that was there. So I'm not gonna put too much into that, and I don't think like a lot of those um, their main guys were like uh, playing like heavy minutes. So um, what does it so- turn into actual? like tournament play like i don't know when the olympics not until the olympics are this is just exhibitions just so that way they can kind of get a feel um and playing with one another so like i I think they have a game either today or tomorrow against um is it australia it's either australia or argentina one of the two i think they have a game um but they uh i mean they had a 10 point lead at one point they just didn't really kind of close it out they struggled with that because they were they started going to more of like that isolation stuff and it's like you have all these guys that do isolation you got tatum you got Lillard, you got uh kd you know what i mean so you got bill right. i think books joining them out. after the finals isn't he 
Booker's joining them. Middleton's joining. Drew Holiday's joining. So that like those are some of like the you know with Drew and Middleton and stuff like that. That brings some more defense, mm-hmm. uh, defensive um, uh, minded guys that would definitely help and stuff like that. And just gives them some more length, especially with Middleton. Um, but I told you, I think that, that that Nigerian team might surprise some people. Yeah, you you were spot on, bro. They played very big and they're athletic too. You just watch them like run yeah. up and down the court. It was like whoa. Yeah, you know, good transition. Yeah, the only D. thing that's really um kind of weird is that like i don't think anybody expected the nigerian team i think they hit like 23s like yeah how often is that really going to happen could be an anomaly right? yeah right at that part so for sure yeah. what do you um what about book what about so if they win this this is his first postseason grant i think he's 24 or 25 now this is like his fifth or sixth year but um i mean that's a pretty good start being that this is his first postseason. If he's going to win, you know, uh, if, you know, he might win MVP, I, I would give it to Chris Paul right now, but you know, he's yeah. clearly going to have a chip. Uh, I don't know what the future holds for Phoenix. I don't think Chris Paul can get much better. So it seems like they're going to have to do some kind of, you know, something there at some point in the future mm-hmm. to kind of figure that out. And they're going to have to, you know, continue to keep a good team around him. But, uh, if he keeps improving like that and wins a couple MVPs, like he's definitely on track already for, you know, a hall of fame career. So. Yeah. I mean, book is leading there. I don't know if book will get to an MVP to be honest. Um, Cause um, like just a competition that he's going to be going up against, it's going to mm-hmm. be tough. Right. Yeah. Like you have Jokic, you got Doncic, you got Embiid. Trey um, on now, bro. You, right. You got, you know, you got Trey, um, Steph, like Clay Thompson's oh, yeah. coming back, right? Like so, Steph is gonna be there. Bron is like James Harden. Like there, it's it's gonna be tough for Book Definitely. to, um, and you know we're not even mentioning guys like, but you know like Zion, like Zion averaged fucking what was it like twenty eight or yeah. yeah, like, and he's only he he just turned twenty one. Yeah, man. He is unstoppable going to the rim, bro. He just got that like quick twitch that I've never seen, you know, like so like especially just, somebody his size. So yeah, bro. it's so it, it's gonna be tough for Book. It really is gonna be tough for Book, but I think I don't know if that's gonna hinder. I don't think he it, would it be nice for him to get it. I think he may book may run to a situation similar to like a Kobe where yeah, like had one. Yeah. Where he, he had one, but there were seasons where you like, damn, Kobe could have probably won it. And Book may run into those situations, but I think Book would rather probably have, like, give me the championship. I'll take the championship. Yeah. I don't need sure. these lesson names. So. Well, that's true because, like, you, you kind of just said, it, there's so many MVP scenarios where you look at it and you're like, so and so else probably should have won that, right? You know? Um, yeah. You know, you can argue that with LeBron's first year in Miami. You know, D Rose won it, and a lot of people thought they just gave it. You know, D Rose played phenomenal that season for sure. But like, if you look at LeBron's numbers, and they had the better record. Like, you know, like he he just played amazing. But it was kind of like, yeah. you know, maybe the league was kind of pissed off at LeBron at that time, and he had just won two, so it may have been like voter fatigue. Um, even you know, it's a weird one, bro. Even 2018, someone just posted something about like Harden stacked up against LeBron. I don't remember what the team records were but like bronze stats were like far better than hardens that year which was which is crazy it's weird too because harden was i I was just looking this up he won the scoring title in 2018 but bronze scored the most points that season i didn't under i didn't realize that that the scoring title isn't whoever scored the most points it's whoever averaged the most points per game it's always yeah it's always been for a minimum the most because it's like right yeah, because you got to look at it like you can probably score the most. It's probably like you, you don't miss out on any games, right? Yeah. You got to kind of equate for like injuries and stuff like that. So. That's what it was. Harden played 72 that year and Braun played every game. But I don't like that in that situation, bro. Like, okay, he played 10 more games. Like, I think he deserves that scoring title over Harden in that situation. Like, that, that that's weird to me that like the person that literally scored more points doesn't have the scoring title. That, that That's very odd. But that's an argument for another day um yeah yeah i don't know it'll it'll be interesting and then on the flip side though what about Giannis? if they can turn this around and win it that's gonna look pretty good for him being that he decided to stay there took the max you know wanted to build around and then brought them their first title since luel cinder yeah, okay so yeah i think with Giannis, it will um put him start to really start to develop his like hall of fame career profile mm-hmm Right where you know he has two MVPs. If he can get a championship, especially bring it to that market, bring it to a smaller market. But it's not gonna um, 
like I said, it's not gonna help like him get m- bring people to Milwaukee. Like nobody wants to go to Milwaukee, bro. No, man, this is a bummer for the small markets because if if no one wanted to join LeBron James in Cleveland, you know what I mean? Like obviously they no you know going. they had to draft no Kyrie going. and trade for Love, but like when did he ever even get a free agent? That you know what I mean? Like not, like those small markets, it sucks. Like it's just I I, I really feel for him. It's like Boston. LA, New York, they kind of have an advantage in that they can kind of just land free agents, even if it doesn't look like the franchise is going in the right direction. You know, it's crazy. Well, I don't know if that because remember, you look at those years where with New York, like they couldn't get anybody. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think it it really it has to be the right situation for players wanting to go there. Um, I think New York is starting to kind of adjust and kind of they're right on they're on they're on the right trajectory right like they got a good coach um with Thibodeau and then um they made it to the playoffs right so they're in they're going in the right uh right direction so you think they could land a big free agent this offseason New York it just seems like like everything you just said they're on the right path right now and they what were fourth in the east this year like I I could see something going Uh, on Maybe I just I'm not sure who who though. Yeah, I don't either. Like I don't. <laughs> there's no like top five free agents. This you know I don't really think. But like, like the free agency class this year, I I don't know. I don't yeah. know. I haven't even it, looked at it, it to be honest with you. I, I'm probably yeah. Thinking. I have to look at it. Maybe we can talk about that in the coming one of these coming yeah, episodes. We will. What to get into that? You know, kind of see where people are gonna land. But uh, it's a. Uh, it'll definitely be interesting to see what happens with the young teams like that, like them, Atlanta, on the other side, you got like Dallas, uh, obviously Phoenix is still pretty young. Yeah. It's just like we've talked about before. It's like that new era kind of like these stars coming in and they're kind of like, yeah. you know, I'm excited for Atlanta. Cause Atlanta were, I mean, Atlanta were Atlanta was like, you got to think Bogdanovich was kind of injured. Mm-hmm. They were missing Deandre Hunter. Cam Reddish didn't play for the whole entire um, then play for the whole entire playoff. So like, they could be pretty nice, yeah. and then they'll get a full seat. You know, they get a full off off season and everything in mini camp with um with Nate McMillan. Now that they done named him the coach, so like Atlanta can be nice. Um, but I think the whole entire this whole entire off season is going to be revolved around the Sixers and what they're going to do with that offense, what they're going to do with Ben Simmons. Like mm-hmm. they have to figure something out. They do. And Portland, bro. It's, you know, I've a lot of Dame talk right now. Like everyone's wondering what the deal is with that. So it, like we've talked about before, it'd be interesting to see if they got a deal done together. But I've also seen people say stuff like send Dame over to like Golden State because Golden State has like the best package with like two high picks and all this stuff. And I'm just like, I don't like that. That doesn't make sense. Like they've already got two guards, arguably two top five guards of their position. Like why would they need Dame Lillard? That doesn't even make sense to me. Like, you know, it makes zero sense. There's not a lot of players that would go to Golden State that I can say that about because they're such a well-oiled like passing machine and they play such team basketball. But like he's one that I just I don't think that would really work out very well. Him and Steph no, I, play so similar. Like it's you know Yeah, they have similar games and they don't play any defense, bro. Yeah, that's that's a good point too. Like, it to just doesn't it doesn't it doesn't fit, bro. It no. doesn't fit. I yeah. mean, I I I do kind of had to like I know I've been we both said that, like, no, we don't think it'll happen in regards to the whole Dame going to LA thing. We just don't think Dame is that type of person. But that would be so see, crazy. They, they, they would. You saw that they just kind of like met up and you know kind of yeah. chopped it up a little bit at that game. Dame they love is in each the other, fucking bro. in the new Space Jam movie, and so it's like like. They have like hella respect for each other, bro. Whenever you hear them talk right. in interviews, like they're just always, you know, that would be scary too, man. That is exactly the type of person LeBron thrives on. Like, you know, D Wade he had, but D Wade was kind of, he wasn't like 06 D Wade, right? He was a little slower. His knees were kind of starting to bother him and stuff yeah. like that. And then but, Kyrie kind of took that to the next level. You know, he was young and kind of, and like, Dame is just like that, like a kind like he can go get his own shot. He's a dog. He's yeah. like he's you know, and he just he it, his game complements Bron so well because he is a shooter mm-hmm. and he get he spread like you have to commit to Dame, yeah. like and you have to pick him up at half court. 
right? And so, like, all that does is just open Brian's game up and and AD's game mm-hmm. up more because they have more space. Because you, as a defender, you cannot sag off a dang, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, you just you're you're asking for him to drop a 50 ball on you, you sag on him, where he's going to drop 10, 12 threes in a game. I totally agree. But the thing is, is like, who are they even expecting that they would trade for Dame? Because I assume they're not putting Anthony Davis in that, but I would. I would trade Anthony Davis in a heartbeat for Dame Willard. I don't care, bro. Like, I, you know, AD's a good player, man, but I just don't even trust that he can play a full season. Like the dude is just like I, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't trust it. I don't I know if I can do that. I don't know <laughs> if I can commit to that now. Nah. Like give up eight. Like not like Dame is nice, but like you 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 got to have some type of like low post presence and rebounding and stuff like that. Like I know they got Drummond there, but Drummond no. and AD just don't compare, right? No. Um, I'd get both of them out of there. Just get a formidable presence down there. Just some like middle of the road like. Seven out of ten, eight out of ten players, and then just let Brown and Dame do their thing. That's what I think. That'd be his best formula for success. Yeah, but I just I still don't think that Dame is going to end up leaving. I think if any if anything happens, it, we talked about this. Like it's going to be CJ. They're going to find a way to find a, to push CJ somewhere else, mm-hmm. um, and, and kind of take things from there. Well, they were saying Demar or uh, yeah, Demar Derozan could go over to the Lakers, bro, and like talk about Which how. It, I don't, how does that help? I don't understand that, bro. Like, the thing is, like, every Bron team he's been successful and he's had shooters. And, like, he, since he's been to L.A., has had such a absence of shooters. And it's like he needs, like, a dog three-point shooter. Like, even if it's, like, like not that good of a player, but, like, a good, like, a Mike Miller yeah. or something. Like, just someone that's, like, they're going to hit threes. And he hasn't had that yeah. in, like, two seasons, bro. Like, that's what well, he the thrives thing on. is, like, I, I get why DeMar, people have brought that up because of the fact that, like, the other thing that Brian doesn't have is a guy that can go and get his own, mm-hmm. right? Outside of AD, like, DeMar can go and get in. He can average 24 a game. Mm-hmm. He can get his own shot, right? And I think there's been a little bit of a lack of that as well is a guy that can just go and get his own shot. Granted, it's it's more of like that mid-range game or whatever, but he can go and get it. But the shooting is like DeMar shot – what did he shoot? I think damn near – under Low 30%. 30s, yeah, something really not good from three. From the three. And that, I mean, now, granted, that could change because he may be getting different looks with Bron. Like, everybody, we, we've we seen these guys get better, like, shoot better when they play with Bron just because of his ability to drive to the basket and get it out um, with the attention. But, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, I, I don't know, dog. I don't either. I don't like that move at all. I'm kind of just um, – Lost on the Lakers right now. Don't really know what to think. You never want to count Brown out, but I'm kind of to the point where I'm like, he's really showing his age. Um, I don't have faith in Anthony Davis, and I just I kind of think that window's closing. You know, so we'll see though. Okay, if they landed Dame, I'd be right back on the. If if they somehow landed Dame Lillard, I'd be like, you know, what if they brought D'Lo back? See, he's so weird, bro. That dude is such an enigma. Like, he had some down years. Well, first of all, he showed a lot of promise when he was first in L.A., right? Then he had some down years. And then when he went to Brooklyn, he played phenomenal. And then, again, I – yeah. And then he went to – what, he was backing up Steph in Golden State, and now he's in Minnesota, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, he had – Was he good, good this season. year? Yeah, I haven't I – haven't he was just injured. Attention. He got injured, so he didn't get a chance to play. But when he played, I mean, he was putting about, like, close to 20 a game. He can shoot the rock. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Not and he's a true point guard. Yeah, he is. He's a true snitch, I mean, he's matured too. now, right? So, like, he's not that little – he's not that guy that over there hopping around. and all this. Like, yeah. he's not doing that. So Still a snitch, Like, though. man, if you don't <laughs> – come on out. Bro, that is like the – Biggest, like, I don't even know what the hell that dude was thinking. Like, little bro, man, that's your teammate. What are you doing recording him? Yeah, that was weird, bro. Do you remember yeah, when that came out? I was like, what mm-hmm. the hell is it? Like, this is like Kardashian yeah. shit in the NBA yeah, right bro, now. Like, but he was like 19, 20 when it yeah, happened. He, he was a baby. Was, <laughs> you know, any better. Or Swaggy P wanted to beat his ass, man. That, that was, was crazy. Funny. I, I miss Swaggy P, man. That dude was a beast. That dude is hilarious. Um, so I, I did want to uh, kind of talk about it. I know I sent it over to you or whatever, the whole Rachel Nichols thing. Yeah. Why are we talking about it, like bro. this whole NBA situation? 
right. Like, so I guess I, w- I first I want to kind of get your thoughts on like the whole situation with her and Maria Taylor. Well, I think, and I'm gonna you know, bounce that back to you at some point here to talk about the race part of it, because I want to understand, you know, from your side, I, so I listened to the clip, right. And she said, whatever, she got to that one point where she said something like, I understand why ESPN wants to do it because they have a bad history of like a lack of diversity. Right. And Mm -hmm. I think the way that the clip came off, like, yeah, she seemed just very like, like two, I've never seen Rachel Nichols. It's just, you know, it was like, you seem like a different person than what I've always seen you on the camera. Right. And it was kind of like that turned me off to her. I was like, oh, I just like it seemed ugly. It seemed like a jealousy thing. And she was kind of like playing that cutthroat role of like, I'm doing whatever I can to preserve, you know, my spot. Um, right. But I didn't like that comment. Um, do you take it as far as like, is that a racist comment? Well, <clears throat> what happened with the Rachel, Rachel Nichols thing is what I feel like a lot of ple- black people feel what happens when you have these people that you that you kind of come off as being allies. Mm-hmm. But when they're alone and amongst their own, they have conversations much like Rachel, Rachel Nichols did. That's mm-hmm. like they don't really mean that shit. Yeah, yeah. Right. And so that's what I think kind of came out with this whole Rachel Nichols thing is like, oh, yeah, we're allies. I'm here for you. But then you go and say shit like that behind my back. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Right. Like and um, and it's you know, and it's not to say that ESPN doesn't have uh, doesn't have um, bad representation when it comes to diversity and everything. But, you know. What what really bothered me was that you have people like Steven Jackson and Kendrick Perkins and everything coming to defense of Rachel Nichols, right? Mm-hmm. And Steven Jackson mentioned that like we there's been times um, where people discuss about like how especially with black individuals we feel like certain people get jobs just because they're white, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And in this situation, Rachel Nichols is making it seem like Maria Taylor was getting a job just because she's black. That's and fair. In my, and in my thing is like, okay, yeah, it's been happening for years that individual like white individuals were getting jobs just because they were white. Definitely. And now all of a sudden, because a black individual is going to get a job because they're black, now it's a problem. See, and like, like maybe that plays a role. Like they'd rather, it, but like I don't like. I think Taylor's phenomenal. Like you know, like I don't think Maria Taylor her, is a dog. That's what I'm saying. Like I don't. So it doesn't. To me, it doesn't. Obviously your ethnicity is who you are that plays a role in, you know, who you are as a person. Like it's part of your culture. It's part of your history for sure. Like celebrate if you're black, white, Mexican, whatever you are, but that doesn't change, you know, her skill as a broadcaster and what she brings. That's, that's kind of how I look at it. It's just tough, man. I don't know. I don't think Rachel Nichols meant any hate behind what she was saying. I think it was more her just trying to protect, you know, because the clip started off with her saying like, what was it? They didn't want her doing the jump that day or something. They wanted her just doing the Doris Burke like side no, recording. No, they so they um, if I'm not mistaken, they wanted Maria to do some of the sideline reporting, mm-hmm. right? Um, and she was like, um, no, yeah, they wanted Maria to do some of the sideline reporting. Okay. And they were going to pull Rachel, if I'm not mistaken, or I could have it wrong, but I believe that's what the case was. And she was like, no, yeah, like yeah. find it, find it elsewhere or whatever. Uh-huh. And my thing is, is like, they're not even taking your bread and butter away. They didn't take the jump away. Mm-hmm. For sure. You still had it. They just wanted somebody else to be on the sideline. Right. Yeah. And no. like, even now she still has the, she's still doing the jump. Yeah. I think she was off for that day. I think they took her off during yeah. like the whole controversy thing. Yeah, they but, took her uh, off the day, and then the following day she came back and she talked about like not wanting to be the you know you know be the story, and she ended up becoming that or whatever. But that whole situation, I think it just kind of for black individuals, it just kind of highlighted like what we already kind of feel like somebody will say something in your face and then say something like that behind you. Yeah, no, and it's something I'll never understand. But like I, I hear what you're saying, man. That's uh, do you think it's like she's apologized and now everything kind of goes back to normal. Like her and Maria Taylor will have a working relationship or is it just going to be no? No. Yeah. <laughs> no, I guarantee, I guarantee you from here on now, Maria Taylor will kind of look at her, you know, like, you know, you know, I say you like you keep your eye on somebody. Like you can't trust. Yeah. 
exactly. you can she can't trust her now. Yeah, for sure. Because you always gonna have that thought in the back of her head of like, well, what is she saying behind my back? Mm-hmm. What is she saying when I'm not around? Yeah, and it's too bad because it's like, <sighs> it, you just look at it and it's like, I don't, I don't necessarily think that. What's her name? Uh, the jump girl who we're talking about, Rachel Nichols. Um, Rachel Nichols. Necessarily, yeah. I don't think she wants anything bad for Maria Taylor. It's just, yeah, that that was not a good thing to come out. You know, that's it's just, it. Just like you just highlighted, it just makes it look like you're very two faced. Like you're saying something when you know someone's right. around, and, and then. And I think we get it. People get this sort of like we get like you want your bread too. Like you don't want nobody coming in and stepping in on your shit. Yeah. And, nobody's saying that's the problem but it was the way that she went about trying to say those things right where like rather it it came off as her trying it just the way she went about like well she highlighted the diversity part right so it's kind of like you're kind of saying like maybe she doesn't deserve this role it's just right and it's like yeah, and it it just it it did not. I don't, it definitely didn't rub people the right way, no, right? Definitely. When there was another way where you can still be an ally, with like, hey, like, uh, you know, I would pre- I, I don't want to give this role to Maria. Maybe you guys can find something else for her. Um, you know what I mean? Like, and could and just left it at that. And I don't think people would have yeah. had no mind. But you bring then you start to bring up this whole diversity thing. What's well, the like thing, that. right? And that's what gets people to question your, yeah. your like, like if that whole clip came out, but that one sentence wasn't there, you know, I think maybe it'd be looked I think at a lot fine. different. Yeah, you know, right. It, like it's... no one asked for you to give specifics, but if yeah, you know, right. It, you know what I mean? Like so, and that like who else, who else knows what else she's fucking saying? You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, just, so that just... it, and l- exactly, and that's what kind of again it just goes back to that point of like. You know, black individuals we just had this thing where, like, you just you're very cautious of people that like say that they want to be your allies because you don't know what they're saying when you're not around. Yeah, exactly. This, uh, yeah, I'm with you. I mean, I talk a bunch of crap about you when you're not around, Mo. But uh. I'm sure you do. <laughs> I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. All right, bro. Let's jump into the next NFC division that we were gonna do. So yeah. Got, so. The NFC East, and I'm excited for this one because this is going to be, in my opinion, the most exciting division to watch this year. Because not necessarily because of the skill, but just they're all going to be everybody is trash. (laughs) Well, outside of like the outside of like the Redskins, right? Well, hey, that's racist, bro. We don't say that anymore. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. The Washington (laughs) football team. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm about to get trolled so bad. Catch I just said canceled. all that shit about Rachel Nichols, <laughs> yeah. and all of a sudden, I just said the Redskins. Oh my god, <laughs> we're yeah, canceled. Man. Yeah, we just got canceled to cut that, that bro. <laughs> god, <man. laughs> no, but they so they were all trash last year, right? I think all of them have made improvements, so they're all going to be a little better. And they, a lot of them had injuries, right? That you know that prevented them from you know maybe seeing their full potential. So they're going to be different teams this year, but I still think they're all hovering around the same area. So I think we might run into a situation this year where it's like, yeah, they're all within a game or two of each other, but they're all around like eight or 10 games. So it's going to be very interesting or 10 win seasons for all of them is what I think. So it's like, it's going to be very interesting. Like the only team that I would feel confident in saying that they can get to 10 wins would be the Washington football team. Like okay. that, that's the only one that I have the most confidence in to do that. You because want to start the defense with them? is really solid. Yeah, we can start with them, but the defense is really solid, right? Like that D line is just I there that D line is top three for sure. Easily, you know what I mean? And then and then they have re- they have really good pieces on offense. Yeah. Well, I mean, you defensively know, in general, right? Their secondary pro football focus ranked them. I just was looking all this up for this episode. They're top 10 in secondary. And, like, obviously we know how good their D-line is. So you can argue they're a top three defense in football. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like that's not what yeah. they have to worry about. It's just all the kind of unknowns on offense, namely at quarterback. Well, I think I think they the quarterback situation, because who they have, is it Fitzpatrick? Yeah. Who I'm a fan of, but I'm I'm fully yeah, I'm a fan of it. Fully you, objective you, in the fact that there's games where he looks amazing, and there's games where he throws right. six picks, and it's like, <laughs> what, what the hell, bro? You know. But I I think if they can if they can really just focus, like they I think they got they got some decent running backs, right? Um, yeah, Gibson showed a lot of promise last yeah, year. Yeah, Gibson man. is nice. They got J D. McKissick, so I think that, and then like the receivers that they have. 
uh, that receiving core with McLaurin. Um, he just got Curtis Samuel too um, from the Panthers. Yeah. So yep, and then they picked up. I got that. That they have the tight end. Like I said, McKessick. Like so, like they have pieces. Yeah. Um, and then the deep the defense is just so solid that like the defense will keep the game close. They just need the offense to come through. They won seven games with Alex Smith being a quarterback who can't, you know what I mean? Who literally just came back from like a life ending. Yeah. Like, exactly. Like, you know what I mean? So I, that like literally that's the only team that I can think can really get to okay. 10 wins, bro. And feel, and feeling like confident, a little bit more confident than any of the other teams. I got gotcha. you. I think for sure, like, defense doesn't even have to be spoken about. They're going to give them great field position. You just made a good point. They had such mediocre offensive play last year and still were successful as they were, you know, just based on that D. If they're all line and Ryan Fitzpatrick can kind of play just above average, they don't have to play amazing. Bro, I could see them getting to, like, 12, 13 runs. I really could. Like, if it, yeah. it all depends on the offense, but I could see it. So I've got them at 11 wins. That's where I got them at. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I does literally the same thing that I had. I had 11 wins. I think they just that defense and they they get to the playoffs. I would say, especially if if Fitzpatrick's is like if Fitzpatrick's is really hitting on it, mm-hmm. they're probably they're probably going to be probably one of the more scarier teams because of that defense. Okay. Yeah. I'm. I'm. Yeah. Definitely. Let's go over to the Giants because I I think this. Team is going to surprise you. is coming back. Bro. I'm, I think is coming listen, back. This is going to be a good year for them. Not an amazing year, but I, I think they're going to shock a lot of people this year. And I think – so they got uh, – what's his name? Kadarius Tony out of Florida. He was all mm-hmm. SEC. And you're pairing him with That's- Kenny Galladay now and Sterling Shepard. So, obviously, Evan no, Ingram. I- uh, they just got Kyle Rudolph. Uh, Saquon's coming back. So – Danny Dimes has weapons, bro. Like, it's like, you know, it's like he's... And everything is going to be predicated on him. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Like, what are you going to do? I don't know how right. good their offensive line is, but he's definitely going to have weapons. So, it, it's going to be interesting. They're going to be a fun team to watch on offense. You know, they're going to have a lot of, I think, big play moments, you know. So exactly. Gonna, yeah. So... And, like, he can't be falling down on 70-yard runs right before you get to the end zone, bro. Mm-hmm. Like... Yep. You, you remember that when he failed, he wide, wide open yeah. field and he failed. In the middle of the hash marks, he was just running. Like, bro, what yeah. is you doing, dog? Like, yeah, did bro. you like did you have the wrong cleats on? Or like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy, man. I do remember I that. I understand how he did that, but he um, it's, it's really going to revolve around him and his ability to, you know, get the ball to those guys, get the ball to his, his um, playmakers and let them do their thing. Like, yep. They have a good secondary on the other side of the ball as well, too. And then they took two yeah. linebackers and corners uh, to fill out their draft. So, to me, like, aside from Danny Jones, it's going to depend on their pass rush because uh, Pro Football Focus has them at 18 in pass rush mm-hmm. going into the season. So, that's very middle of the pack, right? It, it's just like if they can get pressure on the quarterback, I think everything else kind of fills out and they could be a scary team. So Yeah, I mean – when you got you, they put um, they, they re signed Leonard Williams, mm-hmm. who was here, what he had like 11, yeah, like he, 11 or 12 sacks last year. So, like, I wonder if they still have know, Blake Martinez too, because that dude was a beast. Yep, they year. still got they still got Blake Martinez. So, you know what I mean? And then, like you said, that their secondary is nice with Julius Peppers and Love, and mm-hmm. they they got the pieces there. Um, I, I, again, I think it's just going. It's going. It's going to come down to one. I think they, they're Leonard Williams is going to need some extra help on that line. Yeah, like he needs need somebody piece. else to like. If, if he's getting eleven, he needs somebody else to at least get about six, right? Yeah. Like, give me halfway, and then I promise you, we'll we'll do the thing. And the secondary will be there to where they should be able to get some coverage sacks as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's going to revolve all around like uh, Daniel Jones and him kind of taking that next step and. Like he had, you have one of the top um, end zone threats over the last couple of years with Galladay, right? Yep. Like he led the league in touchdown receptions. Yep. That's not that's that's not a coincidence, right? So you had that threat there. You got you got um, and Sterling Saquon Shepard. Coming, but it's a Sterling Shepard's a beast. Yeah, he's a good. He's a great. I think he is like the perfect like 
on paper number two option as receiver, right? You know, Kennedy Gallagher exactly. is that classic big body, go up over people, and then Shepard's going to be everything in between, right? Like just kind of running the slants, getting like the in between yardage and stuff like that. Is Saquon good? You know, that's my question because didn't he tear his uh, ACL and MCL or something like that? So I don't uh, know if it was both, but I know for sure it was the ACL. So like hopefully his recovery, you know, is is to the point to where like he can get back because. He, he, you know, he touched the ball. You at least getting four, four and a half yards per carry. I just hope he's the same, bro. It would like break my heart to see someone with so much like intangible talent, like that we saw from him at Penn State, to just see like a career not pan out in the NFL due to injury. You know, because he had a you great first like- and second year in the pros, but the team sucked, and now it's like, please come back, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. So I think with them, um, I had eight. I give them 10. I think they're going to be big this year, bro. You, you got a lot of I'm, faith in Daniel I, Jones that I don't know if I have that faith. I, I don't know if I do either. I'm just, it's, that's my, it's like, a, it was a gut thing. It was like 10. 10 yeah. Minutes. I was like, all right, we're giving them 10. All right. They got another game this year. I think they can get it. Now, the other two teams, I don't think are going to be as good as these two teams for some reason. I just, I have the Giants above the rest of them. But uh, which one are you going to go into, Dallas or Philly? Uh, let's go with Philly. We'll say the Cowboys for last. Okay. Oh, boys. All right. Um, I guess we can start with the draft, right? They took Devonta Smith. They took two dudes out of Alabama because their next pick was uh, Dickerson, who was their center. Yeah. He's a stud, yeah. too, which he they is. needed, you know. Right. And they both have relationships with – um. What, what am I drawing a bug? Um. Who's the quarterback for the Eagles? I'm drawing a blank right now. Oh, uh, Jalen Hurts. Sorry. Yeah, Jalen Hurts. Yeah. Um, they both have relationships with him, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so he's familiar. With, you know, he get he has that familiarity with uh, with the center and with uh, Devontae Jones. So it's I, I like it, but I at best the the best that I can get with the Eagles, um, and we don't even know if, if Jalen's going to start. Yeah. Like, because the coach hasn't even committed to that, right? Like, he hasn't even committed. They may put, who is it? it what, Flacco? Yeah, he's their backup. Right? So, like, Flacco could potentially uh, start. Um, so, we're not even sure, but the best I got for the Eagle, because, I mean, they picked up Ryan Kerrigan, um, yep. who's kind of like on the tail end of his career, but they got Anthony Harris um, from the Vikings, uh, who's really solid in the secondary. Um, and so they're you match him up with, with uh, Slayton, with Darius Slayton and everything. So, like, they could be really nice, but I just – I don't think there's enough there, especially on the offensive side. I don't – I don't – Yeah, I, that's where it gets tricky, right? I think their offensive line is going to improve a lot this year. It's just about the yeah. skill positions because uh, – so they took that center out of Alabama, Dickerson. Uh, they still have Andre Dillard, who played horrible last year, but um, – he, he's had good years before, and then um, they're getting back Brandon Brooks, who was uh, their right guard. He was out all last year, but he was arguably one of the best guards in football two years ago. So I think their their line yeah. will be better. And they picked up carry on. Yeah, that'll be interesting, right? Who's their other running back? I think they got like Boston Scott and some other just some yeah, other yeah, Boston Scott, Jordan Howard. Like yeah. they got some uh, some de- decent pieces there, and then they got uh, Morsega Whiteside as a receiver, uh, Jalen uh, Rieger. So there's that some, but it's just mm-hmm. I, I, like uh, it's, I just I, don't trust it enough. That's what I was about to say, man. I'm kind, I'm with you there. It's weird. Like it seems like a lot of the teams we've analyzed so far, the skill position players hasn't really been what we've highlighted. You know, other than quarterback, we've made them yeah. their X factor a lot. But like here, that's what it is for me. I don't know how their running backs or receivers are going to really do. You know, yeah, like, there's a, a lot of just guys that are not completely proven yeah right and like carry on has been injured yep boston scott have been okay jordan howard okay jj arcega white side okay like Jalen rigger like he has promised but he's still young it's just the and he has really right and then you don't know what's gonna happen with uh Devontae smith so like it's just there are a bunch of guys that you are com- it's just too many unknowns that you don't know how this is going to work out or mesh mm-hmm yep and they have a you know one of the best defensive lines in football with Graham and uh, what's the other dude's name? Huge Fletcher Cox, is that his name, or is he 
not there. Yep, anymore. Fletcher's yeah. there. Yeah, no, 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 Fletcher's there. Yeah. Um, but their secondary was really bad last year, so that's another X factor for me. You know, they got to be able to stop the pass, and they just, you know, yeah. were not good last year. They just were a disheveled mess as a team, like as a whole unit last year. So, it'll well, be I think them like I think having Slay bringing over Anthony Harris will kind of help kind of bring some more support in the secondary. So I mm-hmm. think them bringing picking up Harris was huge, but um, and they picked up like Lavert Hill as well. So I think they try to address some of those things, uh-huh. but I'm going six. I was literally saying the same thing, bro. Yeah. Like it's, it's, this not, and they're not ready. Yeah. No, they got talent, but it's just a lot of the unknown, man. You just have no yeah. idea what the hell's going to happen. It's just not enough. It. Yeah. All right. America's team, man. America's team. <laughs> America's team. The Cowboys. You know it, bro. What's your thoughts? So, it's, I think everything with the Cowboys is the defense. Right? Yeah. Like, they have to get – so, they brought in um, – was it Dan Quinn from the uh, Falcons? They may have. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so I brought, they brought him in as the defense, head defensive coordinator or whatever. Okay. So, hopefully, he can help address some of the things that they had going wrong there. Hopefully, because um, the Falcons' defense was never that good, so it'll just be that there. part. So, but um, so because I think they they have, I think they have guys. I just think that they were running a wrong scheme last year, and they were kind of young a, yeah. on defense as well. They still um, are, man. They just brought in one yeah. Parsons, who's a, he's a beast, a linebacker from Penn State. They're going to have one of the best mm-hmm. linebacking cores in football this year, man. Which they needed. Yeah. They needed because they were old. Yeah, at the so line back in right. Because but what's his name's gone now? Um, fucking what's his name? Skip loves him. Uh, I don't remember the dude's name. He's one of their linebackers. But they now have young linebackers. Parsons is going to be paired with that Van Der Esch kid, and then Jalen Smith yeah, is still Van there. Rush. Are you talking about like Sean? What was the guy's name? Sean Lee. Sean, Sean Lee. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's gone. So you know, out with the old and with the new. They got some fresh. Jalen Smith, I don't know how old he is, but Van Der Esch is young. Obviously, Parsons is a rookie. They're going to have a really good linebacker core. Really athletic. Like a lot, they can all three of those dudes can yeah. fly around the field. So, yeah. You know. And I think what the NFL now is like, you need that, right? Like you yeah. need those guys that can cover in space, that can cover, you know, going east and west on that yeah. field. Can't be like, one dimensional anymore, man. No, just, you really people are can't. too athletic. So. So it's going to be like you need that now. So it'll be um, – and then I think it's the other thing is that, like, I I know a lot of the story has been about Dak, but I don't think it's Dak. I think it's, it's, it's Elliot. I, I'm right there with you, bro. I've been saying this, like, you know, for a while now. People kind of look at me weird. I thought Pollard played better than Zeke last year, bro. Like, Pollard looked like he wanted – like, he just had that explosiveness about him when he was running the ball. Zeke last year looked – lethargic to me like when he touched the ball he was like i'm going down after five six yards whatever like you know like pollard wanted to hit his head on the goalpost every time he touched the ball like and i just i like seeing that type of enthusiasm and zeke was like that a couple years ago it's just like i don't know what happened man he just seems like he's out of it the o-line is not what it was five years no, ago not but even it's close. still it's still good it's still like, a it's, solid yeah, yeah it's just like it's, what, probably, it's not elite yeah I don't think top five, but probably between like six and 12, like they, they were good offensive line. So there's not really an excuse there. Um, they've got one of the best receiving cores in the league, uh, obviously with, you know, CD lamb. Uh, what's his name? Michael yeah, Gallup. Lamb, and Amari Cooper, Michael Amari Gallup. Cooper. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like, so yeah, they pieces are there. They just, so that's yep. what I don't, it's not going to be on Dak. It's literally going to be on Elliot. Like he has to show up. Yeah. Because that, that team goes as he goes. And then they get Blake Jarwin back. He was a tight end they drafted last year um, who tore his ACL like in one of the first couple games. I remember watching okay. that game, and I felt really bad. So it'll be uh, it'll be interesting to see because he looked like he had a lot of promise, a very athletic, big tight end. So yeah. it's weird. It's one of those things. It's just like such a Cowboys scenario, right? Like they have such good personnel. You look at them on paper, and you're thinking if they're healthy and they gel – this could be a, a really good team, but then like every year, it's kind of like the Lions, right? It's just like okay, they're just gonna resolve Can't right back to yeah. Can't figure it out. So I, with this, I said literally, I typed, I'm going eight because I'm completely in the dark. Like I have no idea what's about to happen with this. Like like I put eight or nine. Yeah. So I put eight or nine. Like they just is like you could you you want to see the defense, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I think at out of out of all the questions you have about the Cowboys, it's 
can Dan Quinn bring a defense? You're not even bringing asking for an elite defense. You're just asking for like a middle of the road, like not to be just completely null and void of a defense. If they can bring a defense that, like you said, if they can be around maybe 15 to 18, it's yeah. solid enough to where the offense is going to do it. The offense is going to put up points that going to sure. throw for like damn near 5,000 yards. That's going to happen. Yeah. I was about to ask you that. So you think Dak is just going to be business as usual coming back from the injury and just, you know, it's too many weapons for it. Not. I just need to see him do it from start to finish, man. It just seems like too often. I don't know if it was the coaching's fault and how like the positions yeah. they're putting him in, but it's like, He'd start balling when they were that down happens. by 21. Like, yeah. it's like, you yeah. know, it's like, yeah. it doesn't yeah. mean anything yeah. to me. Those are empty calories. Yeah. So, yeah. great arm yeah. makes great throws, but I need to but see that like, more it's, consistently. It's not his fault, though, when they're down nope. by that, right? No. Like, you, when your defense can't stop anybody. No, exactly. <laughs> right. So, he's very composed. I don't think he makes a ton of mistakes. Uh, I like watching players like that. Um, again, yeah, it's just such a system game that you know you're so dependent on every other position and every other unit that yeah like it's just going to come down to them all performing and uh i think he could be successful but uh we've yet to see it happen with dallas so we'll uh we'll see i mean fuck do you remember in the 90s when they won those three super bowls i was too young for that but apparently they were good right before i was alive that's what that's they were so they were i mean you damn near couldn't go anywhere without seeing and which i mean it's probably kind of was- kind of true a little bit to this today but i think it was way worse in the 90s where like people had like those cowboy starter jackets on <laughs> and like just different memorabilia and shit like that like they were that team yeah between I mean, them and the too. uh yeah between them and the university of miami Oof. like that those teams were Man, the U has just produced like the best defensive players like i mean like like ray lewis Jonathan Vilma, Troy Palma, Ed Reed, like all these dudes, you just see that come out of there. And it's like, holy crap. And it's like a defensive powerhouse at school, you know? I wish they'd get Not back anymore, to that. But... No, they did a couple years ago if they were like top 10, like, and it was like kind of looked like they're making a resurgence, but and it's then crazy. they plummeted. They did, right? Same thing with like Florida. They were good for a while. Now, who the fuck are like, you know, it's just, it's just crazy. No, Florida's how, like, coming back. Florida's yeah, coming back. Yeah. But it's just weird that how they fluctuate, you know, up and down. Michigan, obviously, everyone, you know, historically, one of the greatest football teams. But, like, they've been very – I know, like, you've made the argument it's true. They haven't been bad, but it's just, like, for their standards, they have been very mediocre, you know, the last five, ten years. So, it's, it's – I'll just be ready for when we move on from Harbaugh. <laughs> I think it's, it's – like, I've been that I too. know, like I, I know they re-signed them, and and beforehand we I talked about it about how the fact that like who else could we go get? Yeah. Um, because I don't know if there's all if there's somebody out there right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but he dog like you, yeah. <laughs> like next season I don't feel very confident going into next season. There's just too many like unexcusable things I feel like that have happened since he's been there for me to like, and some of it's growing pains. But like when you just still have not beat Ohio State and like you've won like once against MSU, like it's just stuff like that. It's like bro, I can't like you got to be competitive, man. Like it's not I don't know with these rivals. Yeah. I don't well, they definitely beat they beat Michigan State more than once. I think twice, but, maybe, maybe, but. I, th- I don't think they have Maybe a winning record that. against State. Since he's no, I think that. it's even. I think it's like three and three, um, which is and, like. Yeah. And then there's that one anyway, fateful night. But, you and I were working together, and they fucking fumbled why do you that. Br- like, why do you keep bringing <laughs> this stuff up, bro? Because you were the one that told like, me about it. We were working, and you were like, Michigan just was fucking like, lost. I was like, what? I don't know. I was like, hot. It was a second left, bro. Yeah. All you had to was, do was just get rid of the ball. Yeah, he could have just threw it. Like, he didn't have to do anything. Like, that that was the perfect storm, bro. That'll go down in history. It's one of, like, the craziest finishes to a college football game, man. Like Between that, was, that and that Auburn and Alabama punt field return goal, or kick field goal. That return. field goal return for a touchdown. Those two was just that was nuts, ridiculous. Bro. Yeah. Man, it's so crazy when you see crazy endings like that. Like, those are just those things you just remember forever, man. Shit. We might as well go in before we uh, wrap it up with some of the boxing stuff. What's – uh man, that dude Otani is just fucking crushing the ball right now, man. That you is – He's balling. Um, Tatis has just been Heavy nuts, hitter, man. Bro. Yeah. 
Yes. And then did you see that one pit that pitcher that got that grand slam off of Scherzer? Yeah, it was like his first. That was at-bat. insane, like, was like, yeah. bro. Wasn't that like his first at bat or something like yeah, that? Yeah, like because normally you know like, with the MLB now, you every league has like a designated hitter, and he couldn't hit because a designated hitter was injured. Yeah, and so he had a hit for himself, and you hit off a of Matt Scherzer like that's an, and a grand slam. Yeah, that's insane, bro. What's weird is the two different leagues have that different rule, right? I don't know if I'm mixing these two up, but I believe it's the NL. You can have designated hitters, and in the AL, the pitchers hit, like which is no. Really I think they're weird. both aligned now. Really? I think they're both aligned, if I'm not mistaken. All right, we'll have to look into that because I remember that it was like weird. It's funny, like every year when the All Star game was in one league, you know, you could have, and then when you know it was like during the World Series, the games it was at home for the AL team, like the pitchers. Yeah, to, that was. Cool. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's all the lines of where both leagues have designated hitters. So Otani, is he just their designated hitter then is what I'm wondering? Because like obviously it's not he he has like over 30 home runs. It's not like he's only batting on the days that he's pitching. Like I'm sure he's just their designated hitter. Did you hear what his coach said? No. He doesn't take batting practice. He hasn't oh, took a batting practice I did all hear that. fucking year. Dude, that's nuts. What? Someone test this man, bro. It's fucking crazy, man. He just like, belts him. What? How, first of all, he's huge. Yeah, he's a big boy. It's a big dude. Yeah. But like, how are you? You haven't took him batting practice, and you lead the MLB in home runs. Come on, dog. He's so confident with the two. Like they're not like just sailing home runs a bit. Like he's just like no, re- blasting yeah. those things. Very Babe Ruth esque, man. Because I think Babe Ruth was a pitcher, and it was kind of the same exact thing. Yeah. Like he just, yeah. you know what I mean? Like it's you know obviously not the same race or don't really look alike, but just these big pitchers that are just crushing the ball man man and then, like you just don't see that type of athleticism yeah, man. where you have guys that can go and be one thing right like go and be a pitcher right and the energy that takes out of you and then at the same time turn around and and bat and like have that athleticism and that power yep. you know what i mean but i think i wonder if it kind of gives him an advantage because of how he may see a pitch Right, yeah. him being a pitcher, he may see a pitcher and be like, "Oh, I know what this is." Yeah, or right. And I know how it exactly, and I can. Yeah. yeah, so I wonder if he knows how it, how to like how that ball is going to react and stuff like that. Yeah. I wonder if that gives him an advantage at all. Wow, that's a good point, man. Yeah, like maybe he just sees how they're gathering themselves and like what like he's just like you know everything. Like I, that's wild, release man. points, like release yep. points and yep. stuff like that, like where he's Huge. like. That's such yeah. a good point, man. It's a, uh, and then on the flip side, staying with pitchers, Degrom is just that dude is just, a, 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 a oh my god, I don't even have words, bro. Like he's probably about to win like his third Cy Young he's in a row. He's untouchable, like, bro. yeah, man. It's like he's he reminds me of what Verlander was like when he was in Detroit for those yeah. like where he was just yeah. killing it, you know. Yeah. So it's interesting, like you were talking about before. It's just like. It's more so this year than any. It's just been such a big year for pitchers. They're just like on another level this year. Um, it'll mm-hmm. be interesting to see how it kind of wraps up. Um, you have anything else you want to get into other than the uh, Fury Wilder newest news? I just want to know did did you get the South Beach Lebrons? No, I didn't, bro. I fucking wish. Why did you say that, man? If you. I haven't, I won't, don't ask me because I'm not getting it. That's like, I don't, I'm living very modestly over here right now. So <laughs> those new threes look so nice. Those blue ones, I don't know what they're called. But no, they don't. I, I love don't them, bro. Do that. Like, I, yeah, because you like blue, but no, they I don't. Do like don't blue. do that. Uh, yeah, I, them, I rock those threes. Those. I, was, I saw those like, what are they called? Oh, okay. They're not university, but I don't know what they're called. Like racer blue or something. Yeah, like that, trainer blue, is, racer blue. So, yeah. Oh man, it's just you know what stinks is like since stock X has became a thing, now all these shoes have real Go. like market value. Like so now whenever I do get back into this once I have money someday, like it's just gonna cost hundreds of dollars for every pairs of shoes. Like, not that it didn't already, but like I just feel like it's even more expensive than it was, bro. It, it, I should have kept is. them. You, sir, made a great investment. And I know, like, you probably let some go over your days, but I know you have, like, probably over 100 pairs still. So you've probably got, like, oh, yeah. yeah. I still have over so 100 pairs. Props to you for holding on to all that shit because now with the creation of these, like, sneaker stock exchanges, like, you can really value how much, like, everything you've got and how mm-hmm. much is worth, which is 
That's yeah, cool, man. It was. Yeah, I'm excited for when we had the next episode when we I can get my homeboy Dre on and mm-hmm. uh, really kind of dive in a little bit deeper into it. Dre's Dre's more so a a Jordan sneaker head. Like okay. that's fine. He, but it'll be good to have um, kind of listen because the dude he's been in, he's gotten like you know Jordan has sent they sent him some shoes they flown him out to places like so he's he's <sighs> deep in the game. Cool, bro. Fuck yeah, love to hear it. We'll definitely have to get him on. Um, and then, yeah, let's wrap it up with the unfortunate news that Fury has Man. told me. So, I, bro, listen, I when Fury beat Klitschko in 2015 and they scheduled their rematch, he hurt his ankle and then he started doing cocaine and then he was out of boxing for like three years mm-hmm. and bloomed up to like whatever, 300, 400 pounds. I'm not saying that's about to happen again, but it just worries me that this fight's being postponed now and it's like, Every interview you hear Fury do since Klitschko, he just says that. He's like, I could retire at any time. I already, my summit was beating Vladimir Klitschko. You know, like, I don't need to do this anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, I just do this because I'm a fighter. And it's like, so when he says stuff like that, you just feel like at any given moment, anything could make him decide that he's, you know, going to just kind of yeah. go off the rail again and not box. So I don't know. I'm just, I'm worried at like how that, how him having COVID will affect him in his um training yeah in leading up, like because you know or... those are, he had like that endurance like you know it's it covid is a thing that affects your uh, respiratory system right yeah. like so it's like it will he and then he was talking remember he was talking about he wanted to get to 300 pounds yeah that's gonna be right yeah. so like being 300 pounds recovering from covid and then going into a fight where you're, you you got these three minutes like can you keep up that level of training and the endurance in it in order for you to be able to do those. And he, he's not somebody that sits still during a fight. Like he's no. constantly moving. So <sighs> that's the thing that like, that's the first thing that jumped to my mind is like, how, what's his recovery going to be like? And is he going to be able to get to that type of peak conditioning where it's not going to affect him? Yeah. Can you imagine if Wilder just like knocks him stark out and like one round, it would just be like, bro, what is happening right now? Like, Right, and I guarantee he's gonna fall back on like I had COVID. Yeah, right. So it's just like, which oh man, I don't know. I, I it's like I, it's I was sad because I was really excited about the fight. Um, I, you know, I thought it'd be pretty entertaining. I didn't. Grant, I didn't. I felt we. I think we both kind of agree. We felt like Fury would probably win the fight, but mm-hmm. him having COVID. Yeah, and throws a wrench. I think the they fingers. rescheduled it. He they rescheduled it for August. Something like that, sometime in the fall. I think like August twenty yeah. fourth or something like that. So it'll be, um, I don't know. Like I just don't know if the recovery is enough for him to get over COVID, get back into like the fighting shape or whatever that he was in. <sighs> yeah, bro. I, I'm yeah. kind of sad about it. I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of sad. Unfortunate. About it. It's just like what because it's it's roadblock after roadblock that won't that like to lead to that final undisputed heavyweight championship fight that we haven't seen since like 2003 or whenever when Lennox Lewis had all the belts like it's like I just want to yeah. see that fight of like all the belts are on the line like whoever wins this is the undisputed unified like heavyweight champ of the world you know like that's yeah it's been far too yeah. long the Klitschko's dominated the era for a while but they were so boring they just would grab and jab and grab and jab and you know they'd knock people out but it was just like they're just boring fighters. Like it's we got some and when personalities. Fight yep. Yeah. Exactly. So there couldn't be a unified fight. Like, and it's just we have personalities in the game now. We got like three or four heavyweights that are you know really kind of making some noise. It, it it would just be great to finally get that mega fight because like man, that'd be one of the biggest fights of you know the last 10, 20 years if we could get like a Fury Joshua, you know, or even Wilder Joshua, depending on who's got the belt. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I don't know. It'll happen eventually, I suppose, but just another roadblock now. And then we got to see if this fight takes it, place. Yeah. So it, like, this is the kind of stuff I feel like kind of pushes fans away. You know what I mean? Cause you're just like, you want it, right? You mm-hmm. really want it. And then it gets pushed back. Something happens and stuff like that. Cause I think people were getting excited about that Joshua and Fury and Fury fight. They right? were, like, yeah. You wanted that, right? Definitely. And then it's... you come back with the wilder thing, which, you and I kind of spoke like you, you want to kind of see where Wilder is at first before he jumps back into that fight. And then that listen, that whole face off, bro, has be you can't that had to be one of the weirdest face offs ever. Right. 
I don't understand what's going on in Deontay Wilder's head right now, bro. Like, because you accused him of all this shit, and then you come there and you just put your headphones on, and you don't say anything. It's like if 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 if, that, if that's what you believe, maybe he, you know, is just a bigger man. He's like, whatever, I'm on to this fight, and like I'm gonna knock him out. But I just feel like that's the time to talk, right? It's the time to sell the fight. And if you really believe all that shit happened, why are you not like this fucking dude tampered with his gloves? This dude didn't beat, right. you know what I mean? Like, it's just, yeah, he, I don't know what's going on with that dude right now. It's just, it's, it's, it's very yeah. interesting. So, you know, fired his trainer. It just seems like he has a lot of yes men around him. Like, and he, he can't accept. Yeah. And not accept the blame. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But if he comes in and just knocks Fury out within like five rounds, it'll be like, holy shit. Okay. Like, right. Like, Maybe he know? had a point. Yeah. <laughs> like, geez.